bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. Mule deer have always fascinated me, and my obsession with these beautiful animals began at an early age. Ever since I was a little boy, I have dreamed of outsmarting the biggest buck on the mountain. Over the years, I have been privileged to take several bucks that I am proud of. However, I have never been able to harvest a giant that I've worked so hard for. 2018 started just as many years prior. In the beginning months of the year, I spent as much time as possible studying mule deer behavior, e-scouting in order to identify specific areas that I wanted to target, and preparing myself physically for the upcoming season. As winter rolled into spring, and spring into summer, I have never felt more prepared for fall. August brought many early mornings. My younger brother and I spent as much time as possible scouting various areas. After several trips, we were able to find multiple bucks that made the hit list.
My dad and I decided to take a weekend trip into a range that we had not been in for a few years. We spent a day and a half combing the area with very few sightings of any deer. We knew that we were running out of time and decided to walk through a zone that held the best feed and cover. We knew that it was risky, but also knew that there was no way to glass this area unless we were right in the middle of it. As we carefully dissected the country, there was one specific area that looked like the prime bedding area for a big deer. Trying to make as little noise as possible, we carefully traversed the technical terrain. As I came around a tree, just as I had suspected, we came face to face with a bedded buck. The buck was alert and his ears were pinned forward. As I began surveying this buck, I realized that this was one of the biggest framed deer I have ever seen. I discerned that this buck's tine length was extraordinary, his mass was exceptional, and he had amazing eye guards. This was the caliber of deer that I have been looking for all my life, and I knew that we had found something extremely rare and very special. We couldn't move without spooking this monster, so we just sat there admiring every aspect about him. He let us watch him for a few minutes, and then he figured it was time to leave. Standing in one motion, he rose from his bed. After licking his lips and flicking his tail, he was gone. We both sat there speechless. After the buck left, we instantly went into search mode. I knew that we had the evening to figure out his core area and gain as much information about this buck as we could. We left the mountain knowing that our plans for the upcoming and even future seasons had drastically changed with only a mere sighting. Upon returning home, my every waking thought was of this buck. I spent every moment that I could researching this specific area and trying to pattern this giant. I realized that this buck's core area was extremely small. I hypothesized that this was how he had survived for so long, but also realized that I had a legitimate chance of turning him up again. I was concerned that we had spooked him, but from previous encounters with mature bucks, I knew that he would most likely return if left alone. It was one of the harder decisions that I have ever made while hunting, but I decided not to go back into the area in order to let him return to his patterns. Over the next few weeks, Taylor and I spent countless hours fine-tuning all of our gear and making sure everything was perfect for the upcoming hunt. Finally, the day before the rifle hunt had arrived, anticipation was high as we packed into camp. As we came around the corner of where we had planned to hunt, my heart sank. There were several other hunters already in the area. I was frustrated, but also knew this was public land hunting. Emotions were high and sleep did not come easily as a thousand scenarios went through my head about just how the next day would play out. The alarm rang and after a quick breakfast, my brothers, dad and I each parted our separate ways. For me, the best approach at the giant buck was to ambush him as he made his way from his watering to his feeding area. Just like clockwork, the wind switched just as the sun illuminated the high ridge above his bedding area. I carefully slid over the crest of the rim and down the opposite side using the available cover for concealment. After setting up my equipment, I slowly began surveying the land. Just when I was starting to worry that the buck had changed from his normal patterns, I picked up movement. With one glance, I knew it was him. He was strategically working his way up through the cover to his bedding area. Although he saw me move, I shouldered my rifle and settled in for the shot. I just found him. I can't believe it. I just got him shot. And uh, I hit him hard. Hopefully I can find him. So it was 238 yards. Um, I hit him twice, so I think he's, I think he's done. The last one definitely pounded him, so we'll see. I did it. Still can't believe it. He's got just an eye. An awesome, awesome deer. He's got really good G2s, good G3s. He's got a killer G4. Good mains. Thanks, buddy. This is the buck that I've been scouting. I hit him a little bit further back, but I pounded him again.
After a while, Taylor radioed saying that he was working his way towards me. As we sat there admiring this monarch, I was ecstatic to learn that my brother had also harvested a great buck as well. We made quick work of my buck and with heavy packs, made our way back to camp. Once in camp, my other brother, dad, and a new friend reminisced on the events that transpired that morning. Knowing that moments like these are truly rare, we sat there for an extensive amount of time basking and reliving the memories that only the mountains can provide. I'm truly grateful not only for the life of this animal, but for what this adventure and others have taught me about myself. Although it took a long time, I'm a better person for the adversity that I have been through in order to accomplish this goal. Taking a giant once, sometimes can be luck, but repeatable success on mature animals requires significant time and preparation. I look forward to spending the time and completing the preparation necessary in order to someday repeat this once-in-a-lifetime pursuit. Uh -huh.